Hi, welcome to unit four of week three. And the topic we're looking at is course plan. Before you start planning a course, you start with the identification of the program competencies and the program learning outcomes. Now, why do we look at the outcomes and we are looking at the competencies? Because we are using the learning centered approach. And using the learning centered approach, we are combining both the learner centered and the teacher centered. In this regard, the learner is at the center of it, but the teacher will help to provide the structure and guide that the learner will need to learn. So when you have the program competencies, from the program competencies, you now derive the courses that will be taught in that program. And in, the prog in each of the courses, you need to equally identify or derive the course competencies. And from the course competencies, you can now further break the content into bits. Either you order it as modules and units, or you could order them as block and chapters. The way you want to order it depends on the uh, kind of house style you have, the method you want to use. But what is most important is that you must have the course competencies, and from the course competencies, break the content into bits. Now, what do we need to do after that? You need to now set out your table of specification. All we need to do to set out our table of specification, we've already looked at all of them before now. And what are they? We have looked at the learning objective, we have looked at the learning activities, we have looked at the learning resources, the pedagogy, and the assessment. These are the things you will need to plan your course. Now, let us look at the table of specification. This is the table of specification and it's divided into columns and rows. On the columns side, you have column headings here, starting with modules and units. The modules and units are derived from the course competencies and you have a prior knowledge, a knowledge that is required to be able to attain the current knowledge. And in this instance, for example, let's assume you want to, the learning outcome here is trying to teach the learners on how to work on latitude and longitude. And with this, in mathematics, the learner would have learned how to factorize. That would be the prior knowledge. Now, talking about the learning activities, there are different learning activities we have already mentioned in the previous learning uh, units. So we have to look at them again. Then you look at the key content that will be derived from the learning outcome and learning activities. Then the pedagogical approach that we have, individually collaborative, transmissive, and the like. Then we have the learning resources. And it's under the learning resources that you're going to have the OER rule that you want to use. Then you have the assessment type. You have to mention the type and the method that you need to use. The type, is it informative? or you want to use summative and within, again, you have to determine the method, whether you're going to be multiple choice, drag and drop, and whatever you want to use it. The estimated time is required so that you'll be able to guide the, guide the learners. The, here again is where you determine the workload of learners because if for the time that the learner needs to spend is much, it will affect the assimilation level of that learner. So the workload here is quite important. So you have to calculate the timing. It will not be too much for the, them to use and it will not be too uh, low as well. Then here we're talking about the action, what action that is being required here. We are going to have a live section at some point. It is important you let the learners know what they need to do before the live section, after the live session. And here, who is going to be responsible? It is always very important when you are developing content and it comes to the point of writing that you may use more than one person to write to improve quality. So in this case, let's assume one person is going to write this content, you put that person's name, another person is going to write this content, you put it in. That will help in the evil distribution. Remember, at the end, we are giving this table of specification to the writers because this is what they will take away to go and write and the content will be full. Now, for in the area of organization, you can see here, for example, you have the 
module. Module one, the basis of open and distance learning. Now under the module, we have picked the first unit because you have to still break down this module into units. So here, the first unit, unit one, is open and distance learning concept. That is the unit. And here, the learning outcomes have been defined. The learning outcomes you will have by the end of this unit, you will be able to define open and distance learning. You will be able to explain the features of and scope of open and distance. They distinguish between face to face and open and distance. These are the three learning outcomes for this unit. And from here, you have already broken this place down. And what you have here will help you in the learning, uh, in the key content that are required. So coming to the learning activities, you pick the first one, define open and distance learning. What activity will be required for the learner to have that mastery of this? What activity will be required here for this person to have the mastery of this? So you have to identify the activity based on the different activities we have mentioned. Now from there, you draw the key content. And like I did mention, from this particular play, because I've already broken this down, it will help you derive the key content working with the learning outcome and the activities. You look at what key content will come up in this area, because depending on the activity you want to do here, align it with the learning content, then come up with key concepts that will help you structure the content as you work along. Then the pedagogy, what pedagogy will be best fit? Maybe for this area, you want to use transmissive. You have a video you have recorded, or you have a test you want to give to them to read about open and distance learning. Now you come here, the resources, what resources would they require? Now remember all the resources we've talked about. Then what kind of assessment are you going to give here? Sometimes maybe you want to use informative assessment, or you want to use self-assessment exercises. Now let us know the method. Is it that you want to do drag and drop, or you want to use multiple choice? How many? One multiple choice on this? put it here. And here, the time that you are estimating, you put the timing here. At the end, all the timing will be summed up to know what will be required, the total time that will be required for the course. And the same thing goes in here. Would there be any today that anyone you know, nothing will come in from there, for example, what is required to be done before and after. You can skip it. Maybe you can pull all of them together at some point. So this is the table of specification, and it is very important while working on online learning. Five steps has been identified for course planning. The last step, which is the table of specification, is a powerful tool for content creation. And in this regard, the table of specification gives direction to what is required in the course before writing commences. The table of specification is what is handed over to the course writers to begin their writing. And it gives direction on what they need to do specifically. The table of specification is a good tool that is used when you are to plan your course. And at the same time, it helps the writer to coordinate what they need to write. So it's a powerful tool and it guides the writing in such a way that it will help the learner to get the content that is required. With this, I say thank you for listening.